Ethical hackers know the sequence of the primes. Use RSA defects against the invader. And when the blood of Ukraine's foes flows into the blue waters of the sea, that's when I'll forget the fields and hills, and leave it all, and pray to God. Traditionalists say, It will take thousands of years to fight a large semi-prime. They said this because they don't know the sequence of the primes. We do. We are anonymous. We will reveal the sequence of the primes in this video. Over 2,000 years ago, Euclid showed every number has exactly one prime factorization, which we can think of as a secret key. It turns out that prime factorization is a fundamentally hard problem. The time needed to perform the calculations increases rapidly as there are more steps involved. As the numbers grow, the computer needs minutes, then hours, and eventually it will require hundreds or thousands of years to factor huge numbers. Nothing in my we will teach you, ethical hackers, the history of public key encryption and how to use the defects in RSA encryption to defeat those who abuse, maim, and kill Ukrainian families. In 1976, Whitfield Diffie and Martin Hellman introduced the first practical secure public key exchange system. In 1977, Ron Rivest, Adi Shamir, and Lenny Adelman announced an encryption scheme involving primes and modular arithmetic. But new math knocks out RSA. It used to be very difficult to factor large semi-primes. But not anymore. It all started when my better half asked me. Honey, can you quickly factor a semi-prime? Say, 155 digits? Try to keep up with me. I will teach you the sequence of the primes. Your man Terence Tao does not understand this sequence. Tao doesn't know? First. We have to remember that every number would be prime if primes did not combine to create composites. This is an evolving periodic function. Terence Tao doesn't understand this type of math. It's a 100% deterministic function. Notice, at the top here, sinusure number 3 proceeds to 7, 9, 11, 13, 17, 19, and so on. The pattern starts with plus 4, then plus 2, 2, 2, 4. This pattern will continue indefinitely. This is a periodic function. But there's two periodic functions working together. 3 times 3 is 9. 3 times 7 is 21. 3 times 9 is 27. And so on, for every number, in the sinusure continuation. This very complex math is part of this very complex equation that even Terence Tao does not understand. This new math knocks out RSA. Here begins our training. We're going to use new math. The sequence of the primes, modular math, and the prime expansion gap will be used to create a simple while loop that cracks RSA. I taught you how to crack a 44-digit public key in my video, The End of Public Key Cryptography. So, you should know what a prime expansion gap is, and you should know this new modular math. I knocked out a 44-digit by prime with my naive approach. Now it's time to do the same to Diffie Hellman and RSA. Diffie Hellman is a method to securely exchange cryptographic keys over a public channel. Diffie Hellman Key Exchange was one of the first public key protocols. Ethical hackers can knock out the Diffie Hellman Key Exchange. Here is the Diffie Hellman Key Exchange, and here is me. I have the key to unlock the code. The Diffie Hellman Key Exchange would be insecure if a large semi prime could be quickly factored. It is very easy to factor semi primes. I think of it as a boxing match. Darling, tell me your secrets. How do I KO a 155-digit semi-prime? Dear, it's a battle of big primes. How do we throw the right punch? How do we pick the right SPF? Public key creators telegraph their punches by using large primes. The math is tricky. You have to calculate the percentage over, the over edge, and the percentage short, the deficit. We have to eliminate bad SPFs. It's simpler than it looks. We have to add pegs until we arrive at 0% deficit and 0% over edge. That's when we know we've reached the public key. We need a little luck, so let's take a few guesses. I can do this. I just have to guess where the SPF has got to be. Remember, you'll never get a knockout with a bad SPF. Do you miss his chin by inches, or by 2 or 3 feet? That's why you need to know percentage deficit and percentage over edge. How do I throw the first punch? We have to play the percentages. 
we must choose several large primes within each subcategory. To factor a large semi-prime, I start with educated guesses within category 2. The 155-digit public key is broken into four categories. I postulate that the smaller prime factor, the SPF, will be found in category 2, which is between 39 digits and 78 digits. You said there is a simple computer program to factor large by primes? Can I KO a 155-digit with simple computer code? My heels can rip apart a 155. Honey, the prime expansion gap will knock out RSA encryption. I start with a simple while loop. If you need a reminder of this process, just look back at my video, The End of Public Key Cryptography. Anyway, we start with an initial value. We add pegs until we reach or exceed the semi-prime. The 155 digit. The initial value is calculated so that it is in the same vector as the public key. The vectors are in mod 12. Once we have the initial value, we add pegs until we reach the public key. The pegs are our add value. Knowing the sequence of the primes, plus working in mod 12, equals my method of quickly factoring our public key. Let's get some exercise calculating deficit by, and overage by. The overage by is divided by the deficit by. That gives you the first percentage. Then, the deficit by is divided by the peg to give you the second percentage. Your guesses will fail, but by how much? That's why the percentages are so important. The deficit by is the amount that the peg falls short of the public key. The overage is the amount the peg exceeds the public key. If one smaller prime factor misses the peg, choose another SPF. If the deficit by, divided by the peg, consistently approaches 100%, within your digit group, you could be very close to cracking the public key. Let's start with three groups. 39, 59, and 75 digits. Sure you can handle three? No problem. Try to keep up with me. As a reminder, SPFs are used to create pegs. Pegs help us discover the real SPF. We have to find the precise SPF, which is defined as the limit of the PKG, i.e., the deficit by divided by the peg. As the PKG approaches 100%, the PKG will drop to 0% when the precise SPF divides evenly into the public key. Let's put some 39-digit primes to the test. Here are two sample 39-digit SPFs. We can see that small changes can produce excessive variability. Based on these first two SPFs, what can we conclude? The public key gap approaches the 100% limit when the 39-digit SPF is at 365 etc. When we decrease the 39-digit SPF, the public key gap dramatically drops to 22.4%. Too much variability. Please take note that here our 39-digit SPF starts with 997642, etc. And that produces a public key gap of 91.8%. When we lower the 39-digit SPF to 958619, etc., the public key gap falls to 81.7%. Arbitrarily raising the 39-digit SPF to 997, etc. causes the public key gap to approach 100%. This is not a good sign. Lowering the 39-digit SPF to 958 etc. causes a dramatic drop in the public key gap. This is even worse. It shows too much variability within the 39-digit group. Remember, the correct number of digits will consistently approach 100% PKG. But, how do we know when we get to the right number of digits for the SPF? Every high-value semi-prime will produce a mod 12 signature that identifies the specific number of digits in its smaller prime factor. In other words, the public key gap with respect to the number of digits that actually comprise the smaller prime factor of the public key will consistently tend towards the 100% limit and crash at 0% when the SPF evenly divides into the public key. Making a bad guess is not a big deal. Sweetheart, you need to know when to hold them, and when to fold them. We just move on to the next SPF group. In this case, 59 digit SPFs. My first attempt was the SPF beginning with 11311. That produced a public key gap of 86.3%. Too far away. So I raised the SPF to 14159 but the public key gap went in the opposite direction. 
when the 59-digit SPF is at 11331 etc., the public key gap approaches the limit, as we can see. 86.3% of 100%. The PKG conjecture suggests that when we increase the SPF, the public key gap should get even closer to the 100% limit. But in this case, it dramatically drops to 16.8%. This is a bad sign. I couldn't get the public key gap close enough to 100% to work. To further test for excessive variability, we tried the 59-digit SPF 11 111 etc. The public key gap was 85%. Lowering the 59-digit SPF to 10 etc. caused the public key gap to drop to 36.5%. This violated the PKG conjecture, showing evidence of way too much variability for 59 digits to crack the public key. We had no luck with 39 digits and 59 digits, so it's time to try 75 digits. I tried the 75-digit SPF beginning with 227432. This produced a public key gap that was too low. So I tried a lower SPF, beginning with 102332, and I got a lot closer, 96.4%. The 75-digit SPF beginning with 227432 has a 75.3% public key gap, approaching the 100% limit. The 75-digit SPF beginning with 102332 is smaller, so its public key gap should also be smaller. It is not. It is larger, coming in at 96.4%. However, because both SPFs approach the 100% limit, we know we're getting close. So, we try the nearby 76-digit SPF group. The 76-digit SPF, 1419 etc., is a small 76er, and it has an 87.7% public key gap, approaching the 100% limit. This is a very good sign. The 76-digit SPF, 3293 etc., is larger and it produces a larger 89.2% public key gap. The PKG conjecture tells us we are very close to cracking the public key. After trying a few more 76ers, I hit the right one, the SPF, 7182 etc., with 0% deficit and 0% over edge. The perfect SPF creates the perfect peg. The perfect peg reaches the public key. There is no deficit buy, and there is no over edge buy. This method of locating the smaller prime factor of the public key produced a knockout. Pow! My 76 digit smaller prime factor turned out to be the perfect guess. Now that I know your secrets, I'd like to take the lead. Do you mind? Not at all, dear. Darling, will our system crack a 500 digit public key? Sweetheart, it will work even better, with larger semi-primes.